Hey everybody, I have a video here for you today, and we are going to skip off the Ancient America theme just for a little while. And I've got a few videos that I wanted to make, and I'm still working on Ancient America videos, but I just wanted to do this one because I was looking into this before I started that Ancient America series. And when I started that Ancient America series, I thought, well, I'm going to look at all these or as many of them as I can and try to establish a story, and I'm realizing these are located in pretty much every part of the country. I have had so many messages, hey, we have this mound in this area, and everybody just accepts that they have ancient Indian mounds in their area, but they don't kind of look at the big picture and realize these are scattered all over the United States, and there's probably maybe as many as a quarter of a million of them. I want to get back to ancient Egypt just for a little bit because I was looking into this topic of pre-dynastic tombs for a bit, and uh, I wanted to mention Matt, the ancient architect, put out the videos that he thinks the Sphinx was a lion, and people know my strong opinions on that and people think oh no the, these guys are having a big disagreement now maybe they don't like each other or they're not friends anymore well actually I like Matt more after that video because we had a discussion and he listened to me he listened to my bullheadedness and my messages and my strong opinions and uh, I was totally disagreeing with him in every way I could and trying to give him what I thought was the evidence and it's just clear when you're researching this the Sphinx the reason why we don't know the history of the Sphinx is because it takes a long time this isn't something that can be done in a few weeks or even months it takes a long time because certainly we should listen to what the ancient Egyptians especially the earliest Egyptians say in their text was their history and I know just reading the book of coming forth by day and looking at each individual word that I was confused about and trying to figure out what the heck I was actually reading that took months so Matt started looking into this a few I don't know a few weeks ago well I know it takes probably years to figure out this mystery because you need to read the history and Matt and I we had a, a pretty long discussion and I was as adamant as I ever am with any of my subs when they disagree with me on this subject and uh, am I going to go softer on Matt just because he's a friend and he has tons of subs on YouTube? No, I'm always going to give my honest opinion, he, and he knows that, and he listened to me, and I wasn't really nice. <laughs> I wasn't real nice, but I'm I'm just always adamant in defending what I found in five, year, five years of research. And then at the end of the day, Matt and I talked about stuff that was actually important, and we laughed. And maybe are even better friends now than we were so people who say oh no these two guys don't like each other I thought they're working on the same no Matt and I are cool but today I want to go down to Abydos or Abydos or however it is pronounced this is a place I have talked about there is something very ancient and very mysterious buried beneath the mountain of Anubis here we have an ancient pre-dynastic temple the temple of Kenti Amentiu. In Greek, we know that is the temple of Anubis. Here are some of the earliest tombs from the dynastic Egyptians, people coming from the very earliest dynasties. So obviously, this was a hugely important place. But those who have followed me for a long time know that I have made videos on pretty much every single topic coming from ancient Egypt and showed every single ancient site imaginable and if you have a site in Egypt you think I haven't covered please leave a message but I thought it would be worth it to make a video on probably the oldest king as being referred to from evidence and artifacts that we have coming from ancient Egypt I thought that was well worth making a video right up in this area we have a tomb but one thing that is certainly a mystery is the king's list, and I know a lot of Egyptologists say some of those kings, they're just mythological figures. Well, this isn't a super old king as far as the king's list goes, but if we know he existed, it's worth making a video on. Right up in this area, we have a tomb of a pre-dynastic king who is certainly not mythological if we have a tomb and artifacts coming from his reign. Here is a diagram of what's under the ground at Abydos. These are the earliest barrows of some of the earliest kings, at least that we can confirm. 
Here you can see all the names. I will leave a link below. But just two tombs down from Narmer, who was a pretty famous early, one of the earliest kings, and he's the one that seemed to unify Egypt a long time ago. And there seemed to be symbolism at Giza. And then we had a capital down at Abydos that reflected what was seen up at Giza because Giza was the original location. But right up at the top, Iri Hor. He is a pre-dynastic king. Who is he? He might have been the great-grandfather or the grandfather of Narmer. And you see he is two tombs down. So that makes some sense as far as chronological order. Were the earliest pharaohs buried in pyramids? They had a burial place called Um El Gab down at Abydos. And it was extensive, and we have pre dynastic burials down here. Here is a look at the diagram the tomb of King Iri Hor, coming from about 3100 BC, and this is labeled by some people Dynasty Zero. Now, here is the tomb of Iri Hor coming from Abydos certainly looted thousands of years ago. Now here it says the Horus name, Iri Hor, belonging to Horus. The reading of the name is questionable. The sign of the falcon over the sign of the mouth. Flinders Petrie interpreted this as Ro, since no other king has the name of the falcon, Hor, embedded into his name. And here it says possibly great-grandfather of Narmer. It says, Iri Hor is the oldest ruler of Egypt that is known by name and who has some attributions to prove his existence. However, the items that bear his name as the falcon over the mouth sign may not be representing the name of a king at all. The name Iri Hor never appears in a Sarek, which would clearly identify it as the name of a king, and there are no other associations with kingship. The symbol may be a sign of the royal treasury or other office. But if this is the oldest ruler known by name, and it says that right here, oldest ruler known by name, then what evidence do they have to go on as to how they were representing king's name? They said it isn't in a Sarek. Well, how do they know if, how earlier kings were representing their name if this is the oldest one found? It says, Iri Hor was most likely buried in a large two-chambered Mustaba tomb, possibly the oldest tomb in Abydos. The tomb was excavated by Petrie in 1902. Later excavations found more seal impressions and pot shards with his name on them. The size and locations of the Mustaba tomb, however, point to the fact that Iri Hor was a king, even if only a regional one. Items with the names of Narmer and Ka, and Ka is also a pre-dynastic king, were also found in the tomb, suggesting that it had been reopened and more offerings added. People theorize that Ka was a pre-dynastic king right after Iri Hor, and this led into the very first dynasty of Egypt, a king who ruled, who has a tomb. Darn right, it's worth a video in my, in my eyes. But here's a drawing of some of the symbolism of Iri Hor. And this isn't how dynastic kings are represented as far as symbolism or glyphs. But here he has the symbol. This is the symbol of the mouth. So Horus grasping the symbol of the mouth in his claws. This tells me he was telling people he was the voice of Horus. That's what it tells me. And he was a king. Now this is an actual artifact, and I think this came directly from the tomb, but this is kind of how he was depicted in artifacts, and they theorize he was a ruler from way down in Upper Egypt, and Upper Egypt, remember, is Southern Egypt, all the way from Abydos up to ancient Memphis, and that was really the border of Upper Egypt, and everything from Memphis to the Mediterranean was Lower Egypt. But here, this is how he was depicted, and I guess there was finds made in 2012 up in the Sinai even that had this representation on it, and it seems he was a pretty mighty ruler if there was artifacts found. I don't use Wikipedia that often, but this is pretty much standard information on the subject, and it goes a little bit actually into the controversy of Iri Hor. Seems some Egyptologists are trying to debunk it. Here is that clay seal of Iri Hor. And one thing that has been clear to me looking into all the pyramids in Egypt 
and that was really a beneficial uh, series for me to make because it really gave me some answers that I was looking for. It also provided a lot of questions. But one thing about my pyramid series, where I looked at all the pyramids in Egypt, one thing was clear to me. Pharaohs left offerings to the builder gods at multiple sites. There are names attached to pharaohs coming from many different sites and many different dynasties. Seems they definitely made offerings to the builder gods and they left artifacts there. That was clear to me. That's one of the answers that was very clear. Now let's just read where Iri Hor, a pre-dynastic king, left some artifacts as an offering to the builder gods. And that's just what it appears to me these pharaohs were doing. It says, until 2012, and I think that's when the find was made in the Sinai, the only inscription of Iri Hor outside of Abydos was located at Zayat el Arian. And if a pre-dynastic king was making offerings to the builder gods at Zayat el Arian, then how in the heck could that structure have been built in the 4th or 5th dynasty, according to Egyptologists? Well, I think that debunks that right there. And I'll be going into the uh, pre-dynastic tombs at some other locations, including Zayat el Arian and clear Orion and Anubis symbolism in those pre-dynastic tombs. Here's the tomb of Iri Hor. Here are the many ways his name was symbolized. Now, the Sphinx mystery, well, I think that takes a lot of time. That's a very, very hard mystery. That's why you have no definitive answers and it's just a big mystery. After a thousand videos, do you think I like easy mysteries? No, I like the hardest mysteries possible. Hope you thought this was interesting and you all have a very nice day.